for one bedroom, the same size like this. Like this. Hey guys, today we're going to look at the second largest Buddhist temple in Indonesia. This is a very large temple, but nobody comes here. This temple is called the Chandi Sewu Temple, which means the place of 1,000 temples. And it's known for its ancient secrets. Let's go inside and see what's there. As we walk inside, we are greeted by these two giant guardians called Dwarapalakas. These are huge, probably 10 feet tall or more. This is the guardian doorkeeper or the Dwarapalaka on the left side of the entrance. And you can see he's very big. He's probably about 10 feet tall and look at his mustache. And if you look into his mouth, you can see the fangs coming out. His eyes are popping out because he's always angry. In his hand, he's holding a maze called the gada, which is a brute force weapon. And then you can see that he's wearing this sacred thread. But is it a sacred thread? No, he's actually wearing a snake. On the arm, you can see how the snake is again worn as an ornament. Now, let's look at this Dwarapalaka and see what we can find. Now, on this side, again, you can see the Dwarapalaka with the fangs and a large mustache, but look at his sacred thread. Here, you can see the head of the snake, and again, on the arm, look at how He's wearing the snake as an ornament. And here's another snake. He's holding another snake. And the snake has its open hood. At the back, you can see an interesting detail. He's not only holding a big club called the Gada, he's also having a sword that is put inside a sheath. On the pedestal, you can see this flower. And you can see this little detail on his ankle, which is anatomically accurate. Now, what is the meaning of Chandi Sevu? The word Chandi merely means a temple, and the word Sevu means a thousand. So, when people found these ruins, they named it a temple or a temple complex of 1,000 temples. And who is the main god of this temple? Let's go take a look and see who is the main god of this complex. Who is this god? Is he Shiva? Is he Buddha? Is he Mahavira? Or maybe even Jesus or some other god? Who is he? Can you guess who this is? It's quite difficult to identify the statue because the face is the index of the mind. And once the head is cut off, it's very hard to identify who this is. However, we know this is Lord Buddha. We can identify him by his typical sitting posture and his hand gestures called mudras. Many people in Indonesia claim that the head is destroyed due to nature, but that's not how nature works. Nature is going to destroy everything evenly. It's not going to just pick out the head and cut it off. It may have been anyone who destroyed the head, but this was done willfully. Let's go take a look at another statue and see if that statue has the head intact. Between these ruins, there is one more temple that still looks somewhat intact. Let's go inside and see if we still have the Buddha intact. 
Unfortunately, you can see that his head is also chopped off. This is a sad reality of such a fantastic ancient Buddhist temple. Out of respect for Lord Buddha, I'm going to remove my shoes because I'm going to sit here for a few minutes and tell you the history of Chandi Sevu. Chandi Sevu means a temple complex of 1,000 temples. But are there 1,000 temples in this temple complex? No, when archaeologists started to put numbers on these individual temples, they could only find 249 temples. However, when people first found out about the ruins, it just looked so large that people named it Chandi Sevu and the name stuck with the locals. So this is why they still call it Chandi Sevu, even though it only has 249 temples. Now, you can see that this is an ancient statue. There is no doubt about this. However, archaeologists are trying to reconstruct the head of Buddha. Now, they've put some plaster of Paris on this and they've started to put the metal rod inside because they're going to create or recreate the head of Buddha and then fix it on top of the shoulders. That's very interesting because there would have been 249 Buddha statues like this placed in every small temple. And if you look around, it's very, very interesting because you can imagine that this is a huge Buddhist temple complex. Now, Chandi Sevu is one of the most underrated temples in all of Indonesia. Why do I say this? Because it is the second largest Buddhist temple in Indonesia. Most of you have heard of Borobudur, which is the largest Hindu temple complex in Indonesia. But Chandi Sevu is a name that nobody hears about. Why? because it is in ruins. And according to the government of Indonesia, they say that they can only rebuild one temple every year. So imagine when the restoration work will be complete. If we come after 250 years, we will see the finished temple complex. Let's go to the main chamber and see how the Buddha looks. The main statue, the main Buddha of this temple is also gone. That's really sad. You can see that the main statue is also missing. This is a giant pedestal. This pedestal must be at least 15 feet long. And what, what does that mean? That means the Buddha sitting here would have been about 20 to 30 feet tall. That's why they would have created such a big pedestal. Imagine a 30 foot tall Buddha in a seated position, seated here. That would have been an amazing sight. Even better, maybe they had a reclining Buddha on this pedestal. Maybe that's why they made this pedestal so long. But now it's empty. We have lost an invaluable ancient statue. But let's go take a closer look at the pedestal itself. <laughs> you can see something very interesting here. Um, there are steps going up. Let's go. Maybe it'll lead us to something interesting. And this is the pedestal. This is the holy pedestal of Lord Buddha. 
and uh, behind it, there's almost nothing. There's a little bit of an elevated platform, and then there is a large wall. And on the sides, we can see these animals called makaras. That's weird because the wall is only about 15 feet high, and this is not a real wall. This is not a real wall because it's, it's not going all the way up to the ceiling. So there must be something behind. Is there something hidden behind? Oh, there is something here. Oh, that's fantastic. You can see the steps going up behind this false wall. This is crazy. You can see there are steps going up. Maybe I should go and see what's there. There seems to be nothing. I can see the wall on the other side. It's so narrow. You see, I cannot even fit in. But let me try. Maybe I can squeeze myself through this. This is so dark, it's pitch black, but there's actually nothing up here. There are steps going on the other side. But why? What was the need for this false wall? What did they do? And why did they have such a narrow way? What did they do? Why did they have to come up and what were they doing in this place? Were they meditating here? There's something definitely secretive about this place. I'm going to get down through this side. I don't think so. The Chandi Sevu Temple has brought up a lot of interesting questions. What happened to the giant Buddha statue? Where did it go? Why did they not find at least the ruined remains of such a giant Buddha statue? But now we have found something even more crazy. Why did they put a secret wall, a false wall in the main chamber? And why did they make stairs so people could walk up even though you cannot even go through it walking straight? You have to kind of crouch. Maybe it's only about six to eight inches. Why did they need that space? And why did they cover it with a false door? These are very, very interesting questions. I hope we can solve these ancient mysteries soon. I hope you guys enjoyed this fantastic Buddhist temple. I am Praveen Mohan. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll talk to you very, very soon. Bye.